Hi Algebra 2. Today's topic is on day 2 of unit um, 2B and our targets, our learning targets is I can place numbers in correct number sets so change that to in correct number set and I can determine field properties that apply to the complex number system. So the first part, just want to review a little bit from what we did in class with complex numbers. And remember that complex numbers are numbers that are a combination of a real number and an imaginary number. The standard form of a complex number is A plus B I where A and B are real numbers. A is the real part of the complex number and B is the imaginary part. B I is the imaginary part. Okay, so just want to review what a complex number or standard form is, this A plus B I. A and B are real numbers and A would be the real part of the complex number and B I is the imaginary part. Okay, so remember from um, class we talked about complex numbers and you had our graphic organizer and all numbers are complex numbers. Then you made a decision if they're real numbers only or pure imaginary numbers only. If they're pure imaginary numbers you would stop but if they're real then you have to decide between rational and irrational. Remember rational numbers are numbers that can be uh, put into a fraction. You have a quotient of two integers and we also can think of it as a decimal that is repeating. So like two-thirds would be an example. Or a decimal that terminates. So like one-half that when you put that in the calculator you get 0.5. So that would be a rational number. An irrational number is opposite of that. So any number that would not be able to be put into a fraction or would not um, repeat the decimal when you um, put it in the calculator, the decimal does not repeat or terminate. So it goes on forever. So examples of irrational would be pi or the square root of 2. Once you've decided between rational and irrational, then you have integers, whole, and natural numbers. Integers are numbers that do not contain fractions or decimals. So an example would be like negative 5, negative 4, also 3, and 0. A whole number would be, it would include 0 plus positive integers. And then natural numbers are are counting numbers so we always start counting with one so just think about your counting numbers when it comes to natural and it's all your positive integers and it does not include zero because we always start counting with one okay and lastly don't forget when we're trying to remember between rational and irrational our root word of ratio to help us remember the difference and a ratio, remember, is um, a, another way to write a fraction. So that will help you remember um, the difference between rational and irrational. Okay, now I want you to just practice that for a few minutes like we did in class. And I want you to take the list on the bottom here. And remember, every number is a complex number. So you're going to start by putting all of those numbers here in complex numbers and then I want you to classify them in sets. 
So first decide if they're a real number only or pure imaginary number only. And then if they're real, keep going and continue to classify them and then bring it back. Okay, so the first part is all of them should be listed in the complex number section. Then you have eight that are real numbers and four that are pure imaginary. Then our rational and irrational uh, classification, you would have only pi and the square root of two as and square root of six as irrational. All the others would be in rational. Okay, for integers, you would remember do not include any fractions or decimals. So an integer, there's only three of them, negative one, zero, and eight. And then for whole numbers, it would include zero and eight. And it's only positive numbers plus zero, positive integers plus zero. And then for natural counting numbers, you only have eight. So this extra block was a, just a, there isn't to put anything to put in there, it's just so you didn't know for sure the final answer. So the only natural number of our entire list, only counting number is eight. If you have questions about this, please write them here. So when I'm checking your notes, I can see your questions. Okay, on the back, um, we're gonna talk about the properties of real numbers. They also apply to complex numbers. So we did a little activity the other day at the, after the test to see where you were. Let's clear up some of those uh, confusions that you might have about these properties. Okay, the first thing I want to talk about is the associative property. So an associative property is when you're grouping items and the way you group it doesn't matter. So, so our grouping items does not matter. The parentheses will move around. So an example would be A plus B in parentheses plus C would be equal to A plus the parentheses of B plus C. So your grouping items does not matter. That's the associative property. The commutative property is that the order doesn't matter. And this is for addition and multiplication because it does matter when it comes to subtraction and division. So the order does not matter. And an example could be five times six is equal to six times five. Five times six is 30 and you could find the same 30 by switching the order, six times five. So the order doesn't matter with commutative property. Okay, now I, next we're gonna come back to the inverse properties. Let's first talk about the identity problems, um, identity properties. They get confused with the inverse. And let's first think about the word identity. And I always like to think of the um, what an identity means and that to me is thinking about your self-identity. So to remember the ident additive identity and multiplicative identity we're going to remember that these are going to come back to their selves. So, so if you're thinking about what number you can add that would come back to yourself there's only one number out there and that is zero. So um, an example would be a plus zero is going to be equal to a. So that's the additive identity. The multiplicative identity is you're thinking about what number can you multiply to by anything and it'll come back to itself. And yep, that number would be one so we, an example could be 10 times one is gonna equal 10. So the identity ones, it's helpful to know that they're coming back to themselves. So a more formal definition for the additive identity would be when zero is added to any number or variable, the sum is the number or variable. 
Okay, when it comes to the multiplicative identity, a more formal definition would be when any number or variable is multiplied by one, the product or the number or is the number or variable. So to me, thinking about it, coming back to itself is the easiest way to remember the, the two identity ones. Okay, the inverse um, properties, the additive inverse and multiplicative inverse, are what you think about when now instead of it coming back to itself, you're going to make the item equal to zero when it's additive inverse, and then multiplicative inverse, so you're going to have it equal to one. So if you think about something like 3x, what would you have to add to 3x to make it equal to 0? And the, that would be its inverse, its additive inverse, and that would be negative 3x. For multiplicative inverse, and you had something like 1 half, what would you multiply by 1 half to make it equal to 1? And that again would be its inverse. So that would be its reciprocal in this case. So 2 over 1. And which would make it equal to 1. So that's our multiplicative inverse and additive inverse. So here the additive inverse has it. You're adding something to something so that it would equal 0. For multiplicative inverse, you're going to be multiplying a number times the something that requires it to be equal to 1. So you multiply by the inverse. And we use these properties all the time. This one, when we clear in our fractions. Here, when we're just solving our, for our variables. So we can solve for a certain variable, move it to one side to the other. Okay, there's one more I want you to add to your list, and that's the multiplicative property of zero. And that's when any number or variable is multiplied by zero, the product is zero. Okay, the distributive property we're very familiar with. You guys have been using the distributive property already a lot this year, and you're very familiar with it. Here's two examples where we're using the distributive property and you distribute the a to both items in both cases. Our last three properties are symmetric property, transitive property, and reflexive property. Our reflexive property is, if you think of like a mirror, so the one thing is equal to the same thing. So an example would be a plus 2 is equal to a plus 2. Our symmetric property has an if and then a then statement. So if a equals b, then b equals a. Our transitive property is an it has an if an and and a then part to it so you could say if a equals b and b equals c then if this is the case then a must also equal c Now, a good way to remember these is um, putting them in order um, of our 1, 2, 3. And I will talk more about that in class uh, next time. What I would like for you to do for the rest of the homework is try out problems 1 through 10. See if you can come up with these properties. Fill in which one falls under which case in number 1 through 10. I hope you have a great night.